The first thing we're going to do is talk about how you determine whether graphs are functions or not functions. And I hope you remember the vertical line test, but if you don't, we're going to do it right now. And I expect a cat to jump into my lap at any moment. Yes, and this will probably be George. No, George is going to the other room right now. I have two cats. Usually one ends up jumping in my lap because they're jealous that I'm talking to you rather than talking to them. Cats are like that. OK, but the vertical line test. I am going to draw vertical lines through a couple of different places on this graph. I'm going to attempt to make vertical lines. Here's George. Here's George, right there. OK, George. If I let him sit in my lap, he makes less trouble. He knows how to blackmail me. All right, George, you're part of the class. Yes, you are. Come on in. There you go. OK. Um, the meaning of the vertical line test is this. If you can draw a vertical line through every part of the graph and that each vertical line intersects the graph at only one point, then the answer is yes. This is a function and notice I do have the answers here. Whoop. Yes, I did. OK. I have to switch back and forth between the pin and the line. There you go. There's a yes, because this graph passes the vertical line test. The vertical line touches the graph at only one point. That is called the vertical line test. And what we're testing for, let me write it first. What we're testing for is whether or not a graph is a function. So this graph passed the vertical line test. On the other hand, this graph will not, and I'll explain why. I am going to draw a vertical line through this graph. And notice that the vertical line intersects this graph at more than one point intersects the graph here and here. So that means this is not a function. No, it flunks the vertical line test. Well, there must be a more important reason. Here you've got vertical lines touching the graph at only one point, no matter where you draw it. And here you've got a vertical line touching the graph at two points. Now notice if all I had done was draw the vertical line there, I could say, well, gosh, golly darn, or something to that effect. This line touches the graph at only one point. But see, I have to be able to graph it at other points, kind of use my imagination to draw a vertical line through a graph and see whether there's any point on the graph where that vertical line will intersect the graph at more than one point. Well, why is that? Let's talk about it. This is negative one, negative two right here. This is negative two on the X axis. Negative two is being paired up with what looks like it could be one, two, three, let's say 3.6. Looks like it's a little farther up than three and a half. 
So if negative 2 is being paired with 3.6 there, that makes this point negative 2, 3.6. So now I can safely say that 2 is being paired with 3.6. Negative 2 is being paired with 3.6. Aha, but negative 2 is also being paired with. Maybe I should have said 3.5, but let's keep it up. I'm going to say negative 3.6. Negative 2 is also being paired with negative 3.6. This is a problem. Because in real life, the only reason you draw a graph or you look at a graph is because it represents something in real life that's important to you. You're in a business. You're in the sciences. Something is important enough for you to spend your time looking at a graph. You need to have one answer. Is negative 2 being paired with, oops, that's positive 3.6. Get my trusty there. Positive 3.6. Oh, that was a dashed line. OK, my attempt to draw a dashed line. I think I will draw a solid line. That will make it easier. OK. I need to know whether negative 2 on the x-axis and whatever it represents to me is being paired with one number, not two. That's why the vertical line test works. Up here, I can say, well, let's stick with negative 2. I can say that negative 2 on the x-axis is being paired with what looks like it could be 3 on the y-axis, and no other number, okay? On the graph, the graph at negative 2 on the x-axis is being paired with positive 3 on the y-axis and no other points, so I have a definite answer, which is why we prefer functions to something that gives fuzzy answers. I mean, what if this were New York City? And this were Los Angeles. And negative two was the point was a plane, an airplane. Whoops. Let's see. There's the tail. There's the wing. Um Am I going to New York City or am I going to Los Angeles? I mean, really, is this plane going to split in half and go to both cities at the same time? That's what this graph says. Which is why, I mean, there are some people who work with equations, graphs that aren't functions, but they're of no use to me, not if you need a definite answer. That's why the vertical line test is so important, and that's what it represents. And so, yeah, we could go through these. Draw a vertical line here or anywhere other than that sharp point, and you see this vertical line, oops, vertical line, cuts through the graph at Two points, so not a function. Yeah, right, not a function. Whereas this complicated graph, I, every time I see it, I want to say it's not a function, but it is. Because everywhere you draw a vertical line, the graph is intersected at only one point. So it is a function, even though it looks like it wouldn't be. 
OK, questions about this before I move on. You studied this back in beginning algebra when you were first introduced. Beginning algebra and algebra one are the same class. It just depends on where you go to school. <laughs> 